Hi, my name is Paul. And I'm Brooke. And today we have someone who's looking into what the future holds for designers, which will more than likely include 3D. And lots of Nicolas Cage if she had her way. Her name is Bushra Mehmood, and she's going to give us a peek at Project Felix this week on Make It. All right, Bushra, welcome. Good to have you here. Yeah. Senior experience designer for Adobe. Yeah, Is that what thanks I hear? for having me. Yeah, we're yeah. super excited to have you on. I don't know what that means, senior experience designer. They had to call me something officially, so okay. that's the one they drew out <laughs> of that. That's the official so. one. I won't ask what the unofficial one is. <laughs> yeah. So a senior experience designer, like what do you do here at Adobe? Because I think you're on sort of on, on the leading edge of things. So my mandate basically is to look at the future. What does it mean for designers to work in the creative space in the next five to 10 years? And so a lot of that actually revolves around 3D. So currently I'm on a project called Project Felix. Um, for anyone who's on Creative Cloud, you can actually access the beta right now. My responsibilities range from you know trying to figure out how we can make 3D more accessible and what the future of 3D could be, so augmented reality, virtual reality, all that fun mouthful stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Dreaming about the future. I mean, like how does one go about that? And how how do you how do you even determine that 3D will be popular in five years? Uh, so that's a super good question, right? You look at the value of 3D. So right now, we get a lot of designers coming up to us saying, oh, we really want to be involved in this. We just don't know how. And so my responsibility was to figure out why. Why is it so hard? Um, the medium isn't new. It's existed for several years. But what is it that makes it difficult for designers to get into it? And what I ended up finding out was it's not that designers don't understand 3D. They just don't necessarily understand 3D tools. Right, because opening a 3D program as opposed to <laughs> something like, you know, Illustrator or Photoshop, tools that graphic designers and other designers work in every day, you open a 3D tool and it's like, even though you've only added one more access, essentially, it's just, you, you kind of stop. And I know that's happened to me several times and I've done some 3D, but you, you just kind of don't know what to do to start. Absolutely. And one of the things that's really interesting as an experienced designer is um, the mental models that people have, right? When you teach someone how to do something, um, even in Photoshop or whatever new, whatever new application comes out, you tell them, OK, take your mouse or take your finger, click over here and drag it this, this way, or move that here to here and double click. Well, those aren't paradigms that exist in there every day. So that's something they have to learn um, teach themselves. Right. What does exist every day is you going to go get your cup of coffee. So these interactions and natural interactions are something that require far less um, cognitive load in your brain. And so if we build things that reflect what you already do every day and things you associate with every day, you're actually more likely to adapt to it. So I'm curious, how did you get into 3D? Um, so my background, uh, I used to work in advertising and motion graphics and film, and over there I used to work in 2D animation, and I just felt like I hit a ceiling at some point where I couldn't get the kind of effects I wanted to get, and so it's just out of trying to do more that I stumbled into 3D, and one thing I will tell you, nobody tells you this, if you get into 3D, every movie will be ruined for you because mm. you can no longer go to a theater and watch like, you know, the Avengers without <laughs> breaking down all the composites. You're like, what particle system did they use for that? Whereas yeah. everyone's like, are you focusing on the movie? I'm like, yes, but I'm like focusing on other parts. So speaking of movies, you are a big Nicolas Cage fan, which I think, you know, most people you either love or hate. The guy. Yeah, either way, he is, uh, everybody's opinionated about him. Well, I mean, I did the math. I took every single one of his movies, his Rotten Tomatoes score, and I added it together, and it, like, lands at a solid 50%. Ooh. So, oh. statistically, he's not good or bad. Like, <laughs> he's just so solidly in the middle. But where is he at in your book? Where is he in my book? So, him as a person, I couldn't really care less about, which is the thing that kind of confuses people. Like he's, you know, a 50 something privileged old white dude, whatever. <laughs> but him as a construct is like pure chaos. Like mm -hmm. he always does the opposite of what anyone should do, yeah. but he like makes it work. Yeah. And to me, that's the part that I really embrace. Cool. Well, I want to see some of your work. I know you recently did a daily render project. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I basically was at this point right now where 3D became less of a hobby, more of a job. And when that happens, I mean, I love it, but it also burns you out really quickly. Mm -hmm. And you need to constantly stay inspired. And I want to know what people are going to make. And the best way to do that is to actually 
make and produce content. And so this is actually kind of cool. This is like my husband's arm. I did a 3D scan of it with this thing called a structure. Um, you uh, put it on your iPad. And then I noticed that his hand, like he's got great hands, but they kind of yeah. look like a flower. <laughs> and so that's actually his like that's shoulder super crease. Cool. Uh, oh, and nice. so I just twisted it around. And again, this is an affordance that if I were to do that in any 2D application, it would take forever. Right. So this was done in a matter of minutes. You know, you can tell that you're sort of just like exploring different parts of the tool, which I think is really neat. I think that's the best way, you know, as you've mentioned, to improve and to learn things. Absolutely. You kind of take the pressure off of yourself. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got was from a friend who's an animator at Disney. And he's like, honestly, take your sketchbook and drill a hole in it because this needs to be work that needs to be pure and organic and experimental. Like you can't be obsessed over presenting each and every piece. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these things, you know, it's, I'm not under the pressure of showing it um, or, you know, expecting to get hired for my 3D work. So this is done in Project Felix. And this is honestly not that tricky of a composition. Um, I had this sort of deformed shape and I went in and I put a sunrise image on the shape and then I made it super glossy and then I used the lighting, the same image for the lighting. And so in conjunction with the material refraction mm -hmm. and <laughs> glossiness and all those other fun 3D vocabularies, um, it just gave me this like lighting that I couldn't have predicted any other way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I shoved a triangle in it because national treasure. Because <laughs> <laughs> the national treasure, we love it. I'm hoping we can uh, do a little uh, yeah. demo. Ah, we want to take a look. Can yeah, we, sure. Can we take a look at Project Felix? So Bushra, should we walk Paul through his first Project Felix project? Let's do it. So this is Project Felix, which looks a lot like XD on purpose. Um, we're basically taking these like boilerplates and building the app based on user feedback and the features that they want. And I think the best way to start is with an app a lot of people are already familiar with. So we're not, you know, shoving something new in your mm -hmm. face necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, so to your left, you know, you've got your tools and you've got your assets and your scene. And then to the right, you've got your camera properties and your scene properties. Uh, so the first thing, you could bring in a model. We've got a few models already built in. Ooh. Um, if you have an OBJ, oh, you can bring that, that in. Guitar. Oh, okay, you can bring in, uh, you can import uh, files. Can I just grab this, a colorful one, like the guitar or something? Yeah, just drag and drop wherever drop you see fitting. Super fun. Yeah. And do I navigate around somehow? Like, how do I? So the top three tools are your selection tools. So you've got move, scale, and rotate. So if you want to okay. move or scale. I kind of want to scale it down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And so if you hold down the middle, um, it's like holding down shift, and it'll do a uniform mm -hmm. scale. If I grab one of these, of course, it won't do a uniform. It'll be a guitar, like a limited edition guitar. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Rotate it. This is what's yeah. nice about this. It's so easy. Is yeah, exactly. Like I'm, I, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, but basically the controls are like right there in terms of like rotating it the way I want to rotate it. All right. What else should we add to this? What, should we add a background to it? Let's do it. Selecting a file, CC libraries. That's where I'm going to go because I think I actually have some files in here already. Let's take a look. Oh, oh boy. Cool. <laughs> All right. Let's. Uh, I'm like, what's going to show up? I don't know. Oh, good. Okay, we're we're in the clear. Uh, this one. Bar interior, so just drop it in here. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're doing with the bar interior, but I don't know. You know, <laughs> no. I'm like we're uh, we're gonna make this a happening <laughs> bar, a little cool. So now it live looks music. Like, is there a way to sort of like make it look like it fits? Yeah. So one of the things that we're able to do is take a 2D photograph and actually figure out the horizon. And so if you look to the right, there's two options. The first one says align camera to image. If you click on that, it's actually going to take the camera and. Um, Place okay. it oh, cool. so that it makes sense with the image. What about um, what about matching the color, like making it feel like it's more in the environment? Yeah. So if you look at the small render preview on the bottom, um, it basically has a sort of white shadow, which isn't really correct with the environment it's inside. And so we've automated that as well. Um, we don't think you need to go back and learn the basics and foundations of. 3D lighting. Instead, you can use your background image for reference. So if oh, you're cool. if you go to background and then click on create light from image, it'll actually take this 2D image and hallucinate an entire 360 projection of it um, based on lighting information and give you realistic wow. lighting. That's oh, awesome. Okay, got it. Well, this has been so good. Thank you so much yeah. for walking us through this. Um, we do have a few questions before we go rapid fire. 
Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, before you go. Favorite cartoon growing up? That's a tough one. Favorite, Favorite cartoon, cartoon growing up? Johnny Quest. <laughs> All right, good one. Favorite Nicolas Cage movie? Uh, Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona. That's a good call. one. It's great. Uh, hip hop or K pop? K pop. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, K pop. <laughs> uh, and what's your, what's your favorite emoji? Favorite emoji? Okay, it's two of them together. It's okay. the upside down face with the whole emoji below it. With the what hole emoji? There's a below. hole emoji and there's an upside down face oh, emoji. That so is putting them together. So that anytime you want to oh, like end awesome. a conversation, you just ah, done. I love it. Thank you so much, Busher, for coming in. It's been awesome. Uh, everyone listening, download Felix. It's in the Creative Cloud app. Yeah, and if you have any features and things you'd like to see, please reach out to us. You can do it within the app, or you can go to our forums. We're always listening. All right. Well, thank you so much. And again, guys, tune in every week. We're gonna have a new episode. Watch past episodes. And thank you so much for watching. Bye. See ya.